want to take a step back here and, and get a little bit more in depth at, at to how Bitcoin works. Yeah. At its core, right, Bitcoin, like cash, is an ownership-based system. So whoever owns the asset, whoever holds the asset, actually owns the asset. When it comes to Bitcoin, even though you might think you have them in your phone or on your computer, you actually don't. What you have is that key, you know, that mailbox key or your password, your email account or, or whatever. It's that that actually gives you the ownership. When I send Bitcoin to you, Stephanie, I'm not actually sending Bitcoin to you. What I'm doing is I'm taking my key, I'm unlocking these coins that I control, and then I'm transferring the ownership to you. But the coins themselves never actually move because the coins themselves live on that blockchain that we've talked about before. When we're talking about a change of ownership, imagine if instead of these, instead of having keys, these were like stamps, right? And every address had the ability to have its own stamp. And so essentially, when I send you Bitcoin, I'm taking my stamp and I'm covering it over with yours. And so as long as my stamp is the one on top, right. only I can affect it. I can, I can choose what stamp goes over mine or if no stamp goes over mine. And so long as mine is on top, I own it. But if I sell it to you, then essentially what I'm doing is you give me a copy of your stamp, which is your public address, and I copy it over onto that. And now only you can access it. So even though this thing never moved, all we did was change who owns it. Still, technically, the ownership changed and it moved hands. And because of that, it's able to do so very fast and very efficiently because frankly, nothing actually moves. It's just a change of who owns it. Right. Yeah. There was a great article that was published on Let's Talk Bitcoin .com a little while ago called The Island of Stone Bitcoins. And it was basically an allegory about a, a tribe who uses some money, lives on an island, uses some money, and the money is giant rocks. And they never actually move. They're in the ground, just kind of recorded that so-and-so owns this rock or so-and-so owns this piece of a rock. And that's exactly like Bitcoins. And the way that it's recorded, who owns what Bitcoins or what address each Bitcoins are associated with is by a public record record called the blockchain. So this public record called the blockchain really is the core of what Bitcoin is. It's the continuous record and the continuous ledger from the very first Bitcoins that were ever created back in 2009. Essentially, you can look at the blockchain and track transactions all the way back to that. Now, you might think this is hugely bad for privacy, and in some circumstances it could be, but because most people and anybody can, there's no cost to doing it, use essentially a different receiving address every time. So this is like if you had a different you know, mailbox address every time and before you received a payment, you had the ability to give someone your new address instantly, immediately, and it, you know there was no additional cost for doing that. It would be very, very difficult to track and correspond because you can't tell which person controls which addresses. The same thing is very true here in Bitcoin. And you know, someone like myself who does a lot of transactions because Let's Talk Bitcoin runs primarily on, on Bitcoin, I have thousands of addresses. Literally, you can, at no cost, just generate a new Bitcoin address every single time you do a transact. And actually, that's a great practice if you want to uh, maintain security and privacy with respect to using your Bitcoins. And there's no cost to do it. So it really makes it uh, easy to just kind of separate each transaction into a separate address. Of course, the downside to being able to create so many addresses is actually that this is why the addresses are so long and impossible to remember is because in order to have that many addresses to allow people to have as many as they want at no cost, they have to be, you know, I think it's 35 characters long and alphanumeric. And so like the number of possibilities is literally in the trillions upon trillions. I don't even know if that's a big enough number. So it has its positives in that you get as many as you want, but it has its negatives in that they're very difficult to remember. And so you basically just can't remember them. But there are solutions to deal with that. So for instance, people will translate Bitcoin addresses into QR codes. They're kind of like barcodes, except it's a square instead of a rectangle. And uh, you're scanning dots instead of lines. And somebody's phone or computer can read that and translate it back into a Bitcoin address where they can then copy it to their clipboard or whatever and use their Bitcoin program to send you some Bitcoins. Right. Uh, there's also wallet software where you can manage several different addresses under the umbrella of one single wallet that belongs to you. So there are ways to manage the problem of having lots of different Bitcoin addresses. And in the reasonably near future too, there are other projects that actually attempt to take this and really simplify it by using essentially a dynamic name system where like if my name on this system is Adam and you want to send me either communication or, you know, Bitcoin or whatever, you just send it to Adam and then my name automatically generates an address, sends it to your system. And so you're, we're able to do business just as if there's no address at all and it's all being done in the background in a very secure fashion that's not out yet but i expect within 
this next six months, we will see that. Really, the key point is that you're not sending to a person, you're sending to a Bitcoin address. So that's what makes Bitcoin pseudo anonymous or pseudonymous, right? There's on one hand, there's this public ledger of all the transactions of Bitcoins that have ever been done. So in one way, it's very public, very trackable, very transparent. On the other hand, unless somebody gives you that information, you don't necessarily know who those addresses all belong to. So it's got this very interesting quality that most other money that we're used to dealing with or most other currency that we're dealing with only does not have, <laughs> right? Except maybe cash. Cash is kind of kind of anonymous unless you kind of know who's holding the cash in their hand. It can be used more anonymously than, for instance, like a bank account. DNS is the Swiss army knife for your domain names, helping meet their customers' individual needs since 1998. EasyDNS has been an outspoken critic of SOPA and CISPA. EasyDNS was an early supporter of Bitcoin, and now they are proud to sponsor this show. Do business with a company that shares your values. Get a 13% discount when you pay with Bitcoin. Go to bitcoin.easydns.com and be sure to use discount code LTB.